thank you everyone for joining us at this last free webinar for the year. I can't believe that we've arrived uh, almost to the end of the year. Uh, so I want to thank you very much. My name is Rachel, the CEO of Meaningful Ageing Australia, and I want to thank you for making the time to attend the session in person today and for those who will watch it on playback later. It's pretty likely that you're here today because you perhaps might be a member of Meaningful Ageing Australia, a friend of MAA, or you're involved in some way in creating meaning, purpose or connection for older people. So this is a really special webinar today in uh, the special guest we've got, Nim, who's going to talk about reconnecting across generations. Um, and for those of you on the call today, you are doing good in the world. At this time of year, it's really important for us to say thank you to, do, to you. Um, it's a path often filled with joy, uh, but sometimes you're swimming against the tide. So for all that you have done this year, your work is important. And on beha behalf of us, thank you so much. So... Uh, as we proceed with um, today, I just want to say also um, that I'm coming to you from inner west of Sydney and I'm very grateful to be working and paying respect to Gadigal people and to those elders and traditional custodians of the land and the water. Please feel free to put in the chat where you are coming from today. We're passionate about First Nations um, uh, uh, people, the culture, unique spirituality and being allies. So um, yeah, please feel welcome to put in the chat where you're coming from. Now, without further ado, I want to introduce our wonderful guest, Nim. Uh, and the, the context for today is that um, Nim is a connection researcher and storyteller um, a social entrepreneur, and we're delighted to hear, Nim, um, from you about how you came onto this passion and how you developed um, this, uh, this tool called Reconnect. Um, so tell us, tell us all about your work. Um, <laughs> we, we, we're dying to hear more about this wonderful work that you, you do. Thank you so much, Rach. Uh, this is actually the highlight of my entire year. Um, hello, Meaningful Aging Australia community. I'm Nim, as Rach mentioned. I'm a connection researcher and storyteller at Reconnect. And my entire life's work is focused on weaving stories and crafting connections for healthier lives and meaningful relationships across all ages. I would love to hear more about you in the chat. Um, so please, I welcome you to write your age and what you like to do outside of work. I will start with mine as an example. And one thing here is there is no age shame. No matter your age, we all have something to learn and teach from each other. And so it's really a very age inclusive place today. So as you saw uh, in the invite, today is a conversation. Uh, welcome, Sylvie, also my sister's name, loves horse riding and yoga. Great, so do I. Welcome, Rose, hiking, biking, camping and animal rescue. Great. Nikki loves walking along the beach. You give me a wave, Nikki, I'll be in the, in the ocean swimming. And Marnie's here walking in nature, preferring, preferably with her dog hiking and music, spending time with my sheep and cows. Great. Love this very um, diverse group of interests coming together today. Um, keep your chat window open because we're going to be interacting for the next 20 minutes together and then we're going to have five minutes questions at the end. So today's topic, intergenerational conversations. What comes to mind for you when you think of these words? Unfortunately, sometimes the term intergenerational is often attached to the term intergenerational trauma. However, today we'll be focusing on the positive, the potential and the possibilities of all things intergenerational. So why is this such an important topic across our work and our personal lives? It's all about age diversity. 
this is not just an inclusive practice. It's really a strategic imperative for organizations. It helps propel them forward in a very ever evolving global landscape. And for individuals like us, science proves that it helps us live happier, healthy and longer lives. Age diversity also helps us challenge our stereotypes, change our attitudes and increase our curiosity. And that, my friends, is where we're going to start today, tuning into your curiosity. Now, we're living in a world of media and generational stereotypes. Entire generations are being lumped into very dividing narratives. OK, Boomer, the spoiled millennials. These stereotypes are being called to be challenged. We can't assume that millions of people can be put in such a rigid box of assumptions. You know, each generation brings its own gifts. You know, every human, no matter their age, has something to teach, learn and share. Intergenerational conversations and collaborations are my total life force. I have personally experienced and witnessed how it can be so profound. It's mutual respect and understanding it facilitates belonging, empathy, partnership, and most importantly, it can be really fun, surprising, and life-giving. So type in the chat, I'm open and curious if you're ready to discover more intergenerational secrets. So our time together today oh Sylvie, great, you are fast on this keyboard there today. Fiona. Marnie, Helena, great. We're all open and curious. Our time together today is short, but it'll be equally powerful. And my role is to really inspire you with a compass towards improving your relational health and uncovering more purpose in your life. So the first stage of that compass is reflect. I'm going to drop some questions here in the chat for all you open and curious attendees. And these two questions are really reflection questions. You can answer them in the chat um, if you feel comfortable, or you can just reflect on your um, within your own self. So what are my generational assumptions or stereotypes that I could look to challenge? You can be completely honest here. It's a safe space. And then secondly, beyond my family, Think of the five people you might consider your inner circle. Is there age diversity in this inner circle? Do you have exposure to different ages in your life? You can feel free to write some reflections in the chat. I know for me, these questions are really holding a mirror up to my own self. Um, you know, we all are so influenced by what's happening in our external world. So sometimes it's really nice to tune in to our inner worlds. Now, let's spark your spirit of generosity. How can I best serve other ages? Is it a mentor, a coach, an advisor, a confidant, a wise elder? You know, sometimes your role in intergenerational connections is not so formalized. It's really about facilitating awareness. Wisdom listens. It's about leading with curiosity. It's about being the mirror and the confidant. The trusted listener is often the most undervalued but powerful way you can show up for other ages. I love that Anne has age diversity in her life. Susan also has a very diverse inner group. Great. You girls are living the intergen life already. So if you're thinking, how do you do this? Is this isn't possible. That's really okay. But the data that backs the, the importance of this really speaks volumes. The age demographic that most want a mentor is 31 to 40 year olds. Actually, 75% of millennials want a mentor, as Harvard Business Review reported. And you know, they often brand um, the baby boomers, but I kind of like to rebrand them as the modern elders. You know, they are retiring in the next decade at a rate of plus 25%. Just imagine 
all of that generous wisdom is such huge potential for intergenerational conversations to be had. And that's why personal reflection is a really imperative step towards a life of more intergenerational conversations and connection. It's holding the mirror up to yourself. It's questioning some of your beliefs, some of your assumptions, some of those stereotypes, and really stepping forth with a spirit of generosity into the next stage, which is reconnect. Rach, I agree with you. Stereotypes are very limiting. Anne says, mentor, friendship, listener, asking open questions and accepting whatever's offered as a starting point for explorations. Love that, and That's a great share. So stage two of the compass is called Reconnect. This is the name of my company, but really it's the North Star of my work and the way that I show up in this world. Reconnect is an invitation. It's an invitation for deeper conversations, stronger connections, and more expanded relationships. In my research, one of the key findings was that we just need easy and accessible tools for connection across the ages. Type in the chat agree if you feel like we're all spending way too much time glued to our screens and our phones these days. Agree, yes, Rose agrees, Fiona, Rachel, yes, we can all agree. It's, you know, loneliness and social isolation and poor social connection is a really significant health issue here in Australia and around the world. But here's the positive. Stronger social connection equals better health. And social connection can help prevent serious illnesses like heart disease, stroke, dementia, depression and anxiety. So we really need to go back to basics. We are human. We're a social species and we used to gather around the campfire and share stories across the ages. So how can we have more in-person conversations and more meaningful interactions in this day and age? And that's why I created Reconnect. This is a little blue box of magic. Uh, it's a conversational card game and there's 50 powerful questions that help you connect across different ages. And, you know, it's so simple because it gets people off their phones and the questions are almost like a passport to connection. And it makes your intergenerational conversations fun, easy, impactful, sometimes deep. And the questions are all science-backed and age-inclusive. So you think deeply personal yet deeply universal sharings. I always remember that the greatest compliment I've ever received from a Reconnect customer was playing Reconnect reminds us of our humanness. And I thought, oof, that's so powerful to receive. And I'd love for us today to experience more of our own humanness. So we're going to play a little game of Reconnect. So I'm going to write my answer in the chat and I encourage you to write your, yours. So the first question, which I'll drop in the chat, is from stage one of Reconnect. There's three stages. And I just dropped the question in the chat. It is, what small things bring you unexpected joy in your day to day? So you can reflect on that and drop your answer in the chat. Oh, cats. Everyone's cats lovers today. We've, we've got a lot of cat lovers looking up at the sky. Oh, brightening a stranger's day. Beautiful share. A flower growing out of the concrete. The plants on my balcony. Fellow green thumb here. Susan being grateful. Helena, my children. Fiona observing kindness. Sylvie, dogs, donkeys, coffee, a smile. It's great to hear these answers. My husband doing the dishes, Michelle. You're on to a winner there. <laughs> when the shake machine is working at McDonald's, hey, it's the small things in life. The, the funnest thing about Reconnect is that you really don't have to be a certain age to find joy in playing it. So, you know, it's quite fascinating when you play it with your loved ones of different ages because 
you learn new things about each other. Okay, we're going to do an, the next question. And this one is from stage three of Reconnect. So this is, there's three stages and this is the deepest stage. So I really encourage you here to be as honest and real as possible. This is really a no filter moment and a safe space to share. So what do you need the most help with? And you can be completely honest. I'm going to just note my answer in the chat here. Okay. So I need the most help with partnerships and funding and research and business. Oof. That feels really edgy. You know, sometimes it's really hard to admit what we most need help with. And often when we play reconnect, it's very much an invitation for further connection with someone. And technology, I hate it and I find it frustrating. I feel you, Anne. My partner is actually a Geek Squad member and he helps all ages with their technology and does home visits. Um, handiwork. Yes. Oh my gosh. Can we all have a handiwork person on call to help us? Yes, yeah, Susan, I feel you on this one. Sharing time when I, where I feel most needed when competing demands. It's a busy world out there. Yeah. These answers are great. You know, it's really hard sometimes to put forth what we need help with. Um, but there is so many different areas of the questions of reconnect that really open up inner worlds within us. And it can be such an invitation to connect with the, the people that you're playing with. I guess my favorite thing about playing reconnect is it reminds us that no matter our age, we are all really the same on the inside. You know, no matter our age, we're all human. We all have these human experiences and we're all fighting similar battles um, even those ones that are we're fighting so internally. So the next secret to share for you, it's called the win-win way. So intergenerational conversations are about making it a win-win. So you've got to think mutual exchange and benefit. It's like when you play reconnect, you want to take turns, you want to listen deeply, and then you want to share generously. And vulnerability is really your passport to connection here. I really encourage everyone in intergenerational interactions and also when it comes to playing reconnect, small things can make a huge difference, like practicing your deep listening, resisting advice giving. This one is the hardest one for some of us. Not interrupting, oof. Not interrupting this can be quite challenging sometimes. And putting our phones away. Oh my gosh. Putting our phones away to play reconnects the most powerful thing. You know, and if you're an elder in the intergenerational conversation, it's really your responsibility to lead by example. You know, the world is busy and this year has been very hectic and heartbreaking for many. And reconnecting is really a call to serve because connection, especially with those of different ages, is helping us live happier, longer and happy, healthier, longer and happier lives. And science does prove it. So I feel like reconnecting is honestly the new meaningful aging strategy we all need in our lives. This is about helping us have conversations that truly matter. And why? because we must take personal responsibility to contribute to a more inclusive and empathetic society. We need to help rebuild the fabric of our local communities. You know, so many people are feeling lonely right now. Like one in three Australians are experiencing loneliness and 54% of us are feeling lonelier after the pandemic. But there are small bids for connection in your day to day that can make such a huge difference. You can live the reconnect life. You have the power to connect and make someone's day. You know, say good morning, smiling, getting off our phones during conversations, asking powerful questions, 
being vulnerable and letting your guard down a little, approaching other ages with curiosity over judgment. And the question that I often get is, great, Nim, I want more intergenerational conversations in my life, but where do I find them? Well, the way we gather has changed in our communities and traditionally we used to gather at places of worship or worship or work, but we're seeing such sharp declines in organised religion and a huge majority of us are now working from home in hybrid work, retired and living our best curious lives. So this brings us to the last step of your reconnection compass, invitation. Putting the lens on, on your community connection, where do you go in your day-to-day -day over the course of a week? Are there any intergenerational opportunities such as local cafes, interest groups, volunteering, the workplace, community spaces for more serendipitous intergenerational interaction in your life? And where can you transfer your knowledge, your wisdom and your life experiences to help others on their life journeys? Remember, the first step to wisdom is listening. So often this is your first role before you can share. So please, I invite you in the chat to share any examples of any intergenerational friendships, connections or conversations that have personally impacted you so we can be inspired by you already living the reconnect way. And then lastly, you know, sometimes it only takes one conversation, one micro moment and one interaction that can change your life forever. You know, I, I invite you all to join this movement so that we can reconnect Australia one conversation at a time. Now, honesty is always my policy, so you can ask me anything in the chat and let's dive deep into five minutes of question times together. I'll also pop my email in the chat. You can email me anytime. My office door is always open. So if you have any questions, let's just jump into the chat. Okay, Helen, has I got a question. When playing the game, once players have answered, what happens with those answers? So it's a great question, Helena. So um, quite often when you're playing Reconnect, you're either playing with another human, one individual, or you might be playing in a family setting. So after they've answered their question, sometimes in group settings, other people want to also answer that question. But these answers to these questions are just being, I guess, treasured within their memories and their hearts. I can't, I wish I could be recording every reconnect conversation that's happening around the world right now. Um, there's so many people, Helena, that write to me and tell me about their experience. Uh, you know, I've had some really profound emails, you know, my 12 year old son never speaks at dinner and now we pull a question once a night as a family and it's completely changed the dynamics of family dinners. Um, a lot of people using reconnect on first dates. <laughs> uh, I mean, like, I'm not sure if you're in the dating world, but apparently it's a great thing to take on a first date. Um, also with old friends and new friends, um, you know, people taking it on vacation because it's quite small. I guess it's quite a compact thing to take on vacation. Um, I mean, yeah, I, it's it's amazing uh, when people write and tell me about their experience um, because it's actually not rocket science, right? It's just a, a question, but the fact that the question is put in front of someone and it's on a card, it gives them a permission slip. And there's also a lot of self-agency for the person answering. So it's really up to them if they want to go really deep and vulnerable or if they just want to share what they're comfortable sharing. Um, but what has been most exciting about the impact of Reconnect has actually been the intergenerational piece because it's quite incredible what happens when you get some of the younger generations off their phone and you give them something physical. Um, their concentration and engagement is, is very much heightened. Does anyone have any more questions or comments or shares? 
Nim, I'm I'm just thinking about because many of the, the people in the audience today uh, work in aged care um, settings, and mm-hmm. so um, you know I, I think um, you know we have intergenerational programs, etc. But um, you know the, these cards have been tested to you know be suitable across generations. Um, yeah, can you see them being used in in a residential aged care setting or? Um, where people are visiting older relatives or, um, you know, we want to make sure that this kind of stuff is, these tools, not stuff, these tools are yeah. used where they can um, have an enduring nature about them. So there's an ongoing sort of relationship. Could you comment yeah. on on that? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, if if you really knew me, you would know how deeply passionate I am about elders in our community. And so the aged care space is really important to me and everything from the way that we developed reconnect. So the text size on the cards, the accessibility of the product, um, you know, making sure that it had a very easy magnetic clip opening. You know, these considerations were really baked into this um, notion that it could be accessible across the ages. I think quite often in um, residential aged care, you know, what I hear from my research is that there is a lot of conversations about general things, the weather, um, you know, the next, what's for dinner, uh, you know, I guess the more mundane things of what we call the day-to-day life. Um, but what we've what we've found is that people are very open and willing to share more of their stories, but there's just no simple medium for them to do that. And so if we can start to stimulate more story sharing, both with staff and residents, but also with family members visiting residents I think that's a really important um, aspect of it because there is quite a I guess one of my favorite quotes that is also quite morbid is that you know every time someone dies a library burns and we are losing so much wisdom and stories of our elders every single day And so what Reconnect does is it helps families to start listening and capturing those stories before it's too late. And you can't really do what Reconnect does without the physical product because you can't exactly go visit you know, your elderly mum in at a home and then come up out of the blue with a question that's kind of off guard. So what the cards do is it just provides you with this permission slip to go, you know, down areas and conversation paths that maybe you wouldn't usually go. Um, I think the last thing I'll say about the residential aged care is like, you know, I'm so open and up for helping um, people to facilitate reconnect experiences there. You know, I facilitate these experiences in community all across Australia and so if someone wanted to do a a reconnect workshop with their residents or if they wanted to train to be able to facilitate a reconnect experience like I'm really open and generous and welcoming to help equip others to do what I do um, in these more facilitated spaces but you don't need to be a qualified facilitator to do this Um, there's very um I guess, easy instructions and guidance within the deck of cards um, that provide you with the framework of how to set the right conditions to have an optimal experience. Um, So I hope that helps. Absolutely. Oh, that's absolutely amazing. And I know with the different layers, the different levels as well, you can kind of start off, I guess, in that first realm when we had those very open questions that... um, uh, you know, it's a great entry point um, yeah. uh, before going deeper and deeper too. So, A hundred percent. And and actually the Meaningful Ageing Australia website has the Reconnect cards. We were delighted to have them as one of our first Australian stockists. Um, and, you know, it's great to see uh, the ageing industry supporting these types of initiatives because, you know, we have an aging population, but the intergenerational opportunity that exists is something that we can't overlook. 
Um, and we really need to get all ages involved in this. And that's what I feel like I've been put on this earth to do is to rally different ages together to collaborate and to converse. And, you know, sharing our stories together is our greatest passport to connection. That's absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much, Nim. Half an hour is never enough time <laughs> and there's so much more that we can learn and to understand also about your journey. So I think we'll we'll um, maybe continue this at some stage next yeah. year and explore those opportunities to do some more things within um, perhaps some of the, the network that uh, the people who have attended today might be interested in doing you know starting off an initiative um so thank you so very much thank, on yeah of all thank of you. us thank you so much and thank you for <laughs> all of you participants uh you know this is such a, an important community for me personally the work that you're doing in this world I so greatly appreciate and you know your time is precious and you showing up today really means the world to me and Let's go reconnect Australia one conversation at a time. Thanks, Nima. Thanks, everyone. Have a great Christmas and New Year.